Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, editor of Cabot Market Letter and Cabot Top 10 Report, and this is your Cabot Weekly Review. Well, the market had another decent go of it this week, but we're starting to see the choppy and sloppy action that I did touch upon in last week's video. As we look at a chart here of the NASDAQ composite, I know it doesn't look like much, but just from 2400 a few days ago, the index fell pretty close to 2300 within uh, two and a half days, then rallied up to over 2450 before reversing all of it on Thursday and closing back at 2400. It's this sort of thing that can happen. It's not necessarily that the market is going to pull back sharply day after day and have a you know two or three week 8% correction. It's just more after these sorts of thrusts, you tend to start getting some choppy consolidation. That's actually a sign of strength that it can't give up its gains, but it doesn't make it any easier. A lot of the leading stocks will pull back five, six, seven, maybe 10%, depending on how well their, their sponsorship is. Um, so it's just something to be prepared of. One thing I didn't want to touch on is, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions on some lagging stocks. Here's Home Ins, H-M-I-N. Um, you know, th this had a great run last year. This year, not so much. You know, is it falling off a cliff? No. Is it in, still in kind of a long-term uptrend? Yes. You know, it's above a 200-day. But it's not a leading stock. And a lot of people have held these stocks. You know, they don't have big profits. They probably bought it in the 30s somewhere. Um, the stock's come down. It's bounced back up. The thing you got to remember here is if the market's just come up for six, seven, eight weeks pretty much without a break, you know, and this stock still can't get out of its own way, what's going to happen if the market spends two, three, four weeks chopping around or even pulling back? You know, my guess is, you know, you see it here, that there's just not as much support for the stock. So in my opinion, this is a good time to either sell your laggards or put some stops in. You know, another less obvious example would be uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Great company. You know, I love the wings. But, you know, big gap down on earnings here. It has come back, but volume's been very light on the advance. It barely nosed out to a new high here. And uh, I'm not saying this is the worst thing in the world, but if you own this, you know, you probably want to just keep your antenna up maybe put a stop at the 50-day moving average, make sure everything, um, the stock stays afloat if the market does continue to, to flop and chop. Um, on the flip side of that, when people are asking about speculations, you want to always have a list of some of the liquid leaders, not only are these good buys on weakness, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, but they can give you a real clue as to the market's health and when this sort of choppiness might be over. Four stocks to watch here, Apple, this is no surprise, this remains an institutional leader. And what's an institutional leader, by the way? It's very liquid, okay? Hundreds of mutual funds and hedge funds and pension funds can buy and sell it at any time. Okay, there's no, you know, it's not something that's totally undiscovered, but it does have a new revolutionary product usually, great sales and earnings growth. And there's only so many of these companies and stocks around so that in every market cycle, you're going to get the institutions really piling into a few of them and causing, you know, these big gains. Apple's one of them. It did break out a couple weeks ago. I can't say it's as dynamic as it has been, but, you know, it, it's moved out to a new peak, a little bit of weakness. We think it's fine. I would say on this stock, you know, you, it definitely should not fall below 215 bucks if the market is healthy. Um, Baidu, B-I-D-U, we've mentioned this a million times on these videos. This remains the number one institutional stock of this up move anyway, at least, you know, so far this year. Um, it's totally earned the right to pull back here. Maybe it pulls back to the 25-day moving average here. I don't know. But, you know, this is definitely one to watch and hopefully to buy on weakness. Um, Cleveland Cliffs, or I should say Cliffs Natural Resources, again, we've mentioned this, just an absolute monster stock. It's earned the right to pull back. It's starting to, hopefully. But what you want to see is maybe these will pull back and then tighten up, and hopefully in the videos in the weeks ahead, we'll see some of these tightening patterns that will allow for good buy points. That's one to watch. And then uh, Priceline.com just broke out of a tight area yesterday, Re really broke out a few weeks ago, but then went quiet. Here's some tightening action, like I just mentioned, and then pops out yesterday on good volume, despite the market's reversal. These are stocks to watch, not only to try to buy, obviously that's, that's number one, but number two, just following a list of four, five, six, ten leaders can give you an idea of how healthy the market is. You know, if Priceline and Baidu and Apple all came crashing down, through their 50-day moving averages or through major support on big volume. You know, I don't care what the index is going to do, and that's telling you that the market's not healthy. For now, however, everything looks fine. We continue to expect some choppiness. You want to try to buy on weakness, I think, is your best strategy, and look for some of these tight patterns. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for being here, and come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.